Hi, everyone. My name is Katie, and I'm the co-host of a podcast called Queen's Podcast, where a show about inspiring women from history. But today, we're going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to talk about things that we got wrong from history. here welcome if you're returning you may notice that this channel is getting a little bit of a facelift so this is my obligatory ask for follows and comments if you like this content okay today in what we got wrong in history we're gonna talk about Anne of Cleves she's gone down in history as Henry VIII's ugly wife if you're not familiar with the era, the TLDR, if you will, is that Henry VIII, King of England, had six wives in his life. The rhyme to remember the order is divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. Luckily, the topic of discussion today is not one of the ladies that got beheaded. Instead, she is the second divorce of Henry VIII which was actually an annulment, but whatever. And the misconception that's been spread throughout history is that Henry VIII divorced Anne of Cleves because she was just so ugly. So ugly that he couldn't bring himself to be with her. But there is so much more to this story. To understand, we need to do a little scene setting. We need to understand why Anne of Cleves was picked to be Henry VIII's fourth wife in the first place. And how it was that this girl from Germany who otherwise would have spent her life in obscurity, became the Queen of England for a very short time. So Henry VIII had been single for about three years. This is after his third wife, Jane Seymour, died after complications from childbirth. But now it's been three years, Henry VIII is past his mourning phase, and he is single and ready to mingle. He actually had his eyes on a recently widowed teenager, typical, named Christina of Denmark. He sent his main portrait painter, a guy named Hans Holbein the Younger, to go paint a picture of her. Christina, understandably, wasn't into it. Not only was this fucking guy like twice her age, he also had a horrible reputation throughout all of Europe. At this point, he had divorced the people's princess, Catherine of Aragon, beheaded the scandalous Anne Boleyn, and then his third wife dying in childbirth, well, it was kind of viewed as, oh, he didn't, he didn't take care of her. So yeah, no one is really racing to marry their daughters to this guy. So while setting up for this portrait, Christina didn't exactly make herself up to look super attractive. It's giving me whatever the opposite of pick me energy is. Supposedly, she said, if I had two heads, one would gladly be at the disposal to the King of England. Ooh, we have no idea if she actually said that, but the fact that that rumor spread tells us about his Henry VIII's reputation on like the global stage at this point. Anyway, this marriage to Christina of Denmark was a non-starter anyway. Christina's closest male relative and the guy that was gonna be responsible for picking her next husband was the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. Charles V is the nephew of Henry VIII's first wife, Catherine of Aragon. And there was no world where Charles was ever going to let another woman from his family suffer at the hands of Henry VIII. Because he had really fucking humiliated Catherine of Aragon. Okay, at this point you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with Anne of Cleves? And I promise, this is all related. So Henry's number one guy was this dude named Thomas Cromwell. And Cromwell was like, hey, you know how we did that whole break from the Catholic Church thing? Well, if we made a marriage alliance with a Protestant nation, that would really help us with some credibility there. And that's when he said, hey, the Duke of Cleves has a sister. And because Hank 8 is a scholarly dude, his first question was like, okay, but is she hot? He was probably sent over this portrait, which lives today in the Rosenbach Museum in Philadelphia. It's also on the cover of a book by my friend Heather Darcy. So if you want to really nerd out for Anna Von Cleve, pick up her book. 
So Henry was like, okay, by the looks of this portrait, yeah, she's cute. But I want to send my own portrait painter over there so I can really get eyes on her. So he's sending over this Hans Holbein guy and he's like, look, paint her how you see her. Don't try to flatter her. I really want to know what I'm getting myself into here. And this is the painting that he came back with. And Henry was like, yep, she looks hot to me. Let's do it. Hans Holbein the Younger had no reason not to paint her exactly how he saw her, you know? Henry was the one that signed his paycheck. The King of England was also in a very um, head choppy phase. He was in his execution era. So if anything, Hans Holbein would have gone out of his way to make this portrait as realistic as possible. Anne started her journey to England, but when she got there, the king was not into it. There's this famous story of him calling her a Flanders mare, and that just, that didn't happen. He would have never publicly made a statement like that and like hurt his upcoming alliance with the Duke of Cleves. And even though, yeah, Henry VIII was kind of a that fucking guy at this time, he would have been very conscious about courtly things like that. Now the story you know is that Henry VIII was really unhappy with her appearances. So what did she look like? She was tall, she had long blonde hair, and she was curvy. Because we all know the stereotype of tall curvy blondes being historically unattractive to men. But I want to consider Henry VIII's dating history up to this point. Number one, he had never had to make a purely dynastic marriage before. Yes, his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, did create an alliance with the powerhouse of Spain, but by the time they got married, they had known each other for like a decade. So there was already affection in their relationship. And his next two wives, Anne Boleyn and Jane Seymour, he was head over heels in love with as well. I argue that I don't think he actually liked Jane Seymour all that much, but that is a whole different video. Two, physically, all the women that he had been in love with up to this point, at least publicly, all tended to be more petite and on the slender side. So what does that say about Henry? I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a type, but it makes me wonder if he liked a woman that he could kind of tower over, you know? Number three, he also really liked women that he could have a conversation with whether it be talking about politics or poetry. But frustratingly, no one bothered to teach Anne of Cleves any, any other language before she left Cleves. So she only spoke German, a language that Henry didn't speak. He spoke French and Latin, and I'd imagine a couple of other languages, but Anne was just, just German. So they couldn't converse. So they couldn't build that chemistry that Henry was used to having with the women that he pursued and started relationships with. Also, one more thing. I wonder if her fashion didn't also kind of shock him. The German fashion was very, very different than the English fashion at the time. The English fashion was actually just French fashion, but whatever. So it may have been a little off-putting, like what the fuck is she wearing? Regardless of the king's feelings, the wedding went on. However, it was never consummated. That means they didn't do it. And that's the part where you're probably like, right, they never slept together because of how ugly she was. He just found her so repulsive. But did you know, pretty much as soon as the wedding bells quit ringing, Anne's brother William, the Duke of Cleves, tried to start some shit with Charles V, AKA the Holy Roman Emperor. So yeah, now the Duke of Cleves, he's like talking a big game. And he's like, yeah, my brother-in-law, the King of England, is gonna give me forces and money and send over some troops, and we're gonna come attack the Holy Roman Empire. To which Henry was like, the fuck we are. Henry had no interest in starting a conflict with the incredibly powerful Holy Roman Emperor who was also the King of Spain. And honestly, I think it immediately made him go, what is this alliance? Why did I get myself into this? So how do you get out of a sticky situation caused by a marriage to a woman that you don't really like anyway in the marriage? And that's what he did. So I hear you asking, okay, if the divorce was just over diplomacy, why do we all know the story of how ugly she was? And the answer might surprise you because psychological torture. Let me explain. 
Thomas Cromwell was Henry's chief minister and all around yes man. As a result, this man has a lot of blood on his hands. Cough, cough, Anne Boleyn. So let's not feel too sorry for him in this story. Cromwell had been a very loud proponent for this match, for this alliance, for this marriage. So in Henry's mind, we don't have time to get into what that must have been like living in that brain. He's looking at Cromwell and being like, okay, did you plan this alliance just to somehow get me in to a conflict with the Holy Roman Emperor, which is gonna like bankrupt England? Did you do this on purpose? And so now Thomas Cromwell is charged with treason and he's in the Tower of London and once you're charged with treason and you're in the Tower of London, you typically don't leave with your head attached to your body. So from his jail cell, languishing, knowing that he's probably not going to be uh, getting out alive from this sticky situation, in a desperate attempt to save himself, he writes a series of letters to Henry. And one of them is a testimony about how he pressured Henry into a marriage that Henry was not interested in. And in one of those, he goes into about, the king told me he didn't like Anne. He told me she stunk. He told me she, he didn't like her body. He told me that he didn't think she was a virgin. Smelly, gross, had cooties, had the play. Just basically just went on this tirade about how disgusting this woman was and how I'm so sorry I pressured you into this marriage. Again, just trying to save himself. I mean, if you thought making someone else sound really ugly might save your neck from the chopping block, wouldn't you probably over-exaggerate as well? And those descriptions from Thomas Cromwell are what have been preserved. So when someone is saying like, oh, but everybody said how ugly Anne of Cleves was, they're talking about these letters from Thomas Cromwell, who was just desperately trying to save his own life. But don't feel too bad for Anne. For agreeing to move forward with the annulment, she was given land and money and titles and gifts. She could come to court whenever she wanted to. She was treated with respect. And she got to go on and live a very cool life. She brewed beer, she threw parties. She was generally very popular in her new home country of England. People just genuinely liked hanging out with her, unlike Henry VIII. And many modern historians believe that she probably lived the happiest life of all of the six wives. So that is Anne of Cleves and how you probably learned that she was Henry VIII's ugly wife wrong. I hope you enjoyed this story. Let me know what other misconceptions from history you might wanna see in this series. Cheers, bitches.